The first time you launch Windows Admin Center, you get this page with only the local machine on the list. To manage our servers, we need first to add them by clicking on the Add button. Windows Admin Center give us four choices to add machines to manage. We can add servers running Windows Server or Azure Stack. We can add Windows PCs server clusters and finally we can add Azure VMs. As we are using on-premises servers, I will go with the first option to add my servers. You have three ways to add a server to manage. The first one is by typing the name of the server. You can also import a list of servers by using a text file or a CSV file. These are the two allowed formats. And the third way is by searching Active Directory. We can type the server's name and do a search. Or you can type asterisk to list all the servers available in the Active Directory. To list the servers from the Active Directory, make sure that your domain controller server is running. To add server, select it and click on the Add button. The server has been added to the list. In the type column, you can see that it's a server. The last connected time is never because we didn't connect to this server yet. The account used to manage this server is the domain administrator account. All right, let's connect to this server and see the different tools we can use. On the left panel, there are different tools you can use to manage your server. Let's explore some of them and see what they can offer to the administrator we are. The first one is the overview tool. It displays general information about the server, such as the computer name, the domain name, the operating system running on the server, the version of this operating system, the installed memory, the available and total disk space, the processor, the manufacturer, VMware for this server because we are running this server on a virtual machine on the VMware player. Here we have the CPU load, the memory utilization, and over here we have the network traffic over the Ethernet interface. All right, there are Azure tools you can use if you have virtual machines running on Azure or Azure services. The Devices tool displays the different components of the server. We have batteries, disk drivers, keyboards, monitors, etc. You can display the events logged for that server. For example, the system events. You can manage the server firewall and add incoming or outgoing rules. You can display the installed applications. You can manage local users and groups. You can configure the network interface and change the IP address, for example. You can even run PowerShell commands on the server. When I click on the PowerShell tool, it will display the PowerShell terminal. From the prompt, you can see that I'm connected to the domain controller server and each command I will type will run on that server. For example, I will type ipconfig to display the IP configuration of the server. Okay, you can open any of these tools in a separate window. It can be handy in some cases. Okay, you can display the running processes. You can manage the registry. Here is an interesting tool, remote desktop that will allow you to open a session on the server remotely. You have to enter the username and the password. Ensure that the automatically connect with the certificate presented by this server machine checkbox is enabled. Then click on connect to open a session. Now I'm remotely connected to this server and I can do what I have to do. All right, you can use the roles and features tool to add a role or feature on the remote server. 
you have to select the role or the feature you want to add and click on the install button. You can manage the services running on the server. Here you have the storage tool and finally the update tool to manage the updates on the server. All right, now let's explore the Windows Admin Center settings and see how we can configure and personalize this tool. The first setting is account. And as you can see, I'm logged in to the tool with the domain administrator account. It's the same account I have used to open a session on this workstation. If you want to manage Azure services in the Windows Admin Center, you must be registered with an Azure account. You can change the language you want to use in Windows Admin Center. You can personalize the appearance of the admin center tool. You can choose between the light mode and the dark mode. The dark mode is pretty cool. I will keep it. The extensions setting allows you to add additional tools that are not available by default in Windows admin center. Some of these tools are developed by Microsoft and others are developed by third party companies. For example, I can add the Active Directory tool to manage the Active Directory object on the domain controller. To install the tool, select it, then click on the Install button. It's installing. Once the tool is installed, Windows Admin Center will reload the page. The tool is now installed. And as you can see, it's no longer listed in the available extensions list it will be listed in the installed extensions. Let's go back to the Windows Admin Center Tools page to see the newly added Active Directory tool. Connect to the server. Yes, the Active Directory tool is now available in the Tools list and I can use it. Let's go back to the Settings page. Another interesting setting is the Updates. It could be interesting to activate the auto update to get the latest update when released and benefit from the new tools and features. All right, now that you know more about Windows Admin Center, I want you to add the second server to be managed, then explore and test the different tools to get more familiarized with Windows Admin Center.